Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cup Chat with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. We are excited today to be exploring AgriLife a little bit more. Um, and so if you joined us at Burning the Border, um, Liz and I talked about Taco Bell Extension at our awesome Taco Bar kickoff social. Um, and we kind of explained that AgriLife is so much more than burning with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension and the research, uh, the research we offer and the things that Extension does uh, in, in your local community. And so today we wanted to take that and bring that to Cup Chat. Um, and so today we have special guests, Jana Osborne, who we love, and Ms. Shay Negwin, my coworker here in Gillespie County. She's the FCH agent. So Jana is the regional program leader for family and community health, which that may not, that's a fancy title that doesn't mean much to the public, Jana. So can you kind of tell everyone maybe your role in extension and what you've done in the past? Sure. Um, so I, I've i been with Extension, oh goodness, on Saturday's June 1st, isn't it? So on Saturday, I will have been with Extension for 34 years. Um, wow. Yes, that's a long time. I know. Um, yeah. Older than some, I mean, longer than some of our viewers, right? But <laughs> um, <laughs> that being said, um, I was a county Extension agent for um, 20. Uh, how long have I been in RPL? Um, 26 of those years. Um, I was um, a county extension agent like Shay. Um, started out as a county extension agent for home economics. And then our title changed from home economics to family and consumer sciences, which FCS is still um, the term that like the high schools and stuff use instead of um, home economics. The, the department's changed to all to family and consumer sciences. And then, um, I don't know, about five years ago, um, our focus went from being broader over all of family community sciences um, to really focusing more on family and community health. And so um, my role now um, as an RPL is, um, is I assist agents with being successful. That's my goal every day is to help agents be successful in their counties. I'm kind of like a coach and a mentor. and um, I just I'm all over. I have 41 counties um, in the South region. So I go from Bastrop, Texas, over to Sonora and then straight down to Mexico. So it's 41 counties in the South. And um, I say it's the best 41 counties in the state. And um, so that's what I do. Awesome. And so, Shay, you're in a Gillespie County family and community health agent here. Um, and so tell um, everybody a little bit about your role um, because there there are there is a county agent for all 254 counties in Texas. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's an FCH agent or family is community health agent in each county. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't have the resources if you don't have an FCH agent in your county. But I would say at this point, most counties have an FCH agent. And so Shay, share a little bit about what your role is as a FCH agent in a county. So um, in Gillespie County, um, and I've been here for, in Gillespie County for 22 years and extension for 28 years, um, July 1st. And so my role is really taking all of that education out of Texas A&M University and bringing it into the community, to the local um, community-based. Um, my area is focused on, like Jana said, family and community health with a lot of different outreach programs. Um, the neat thing about each county is we really get to um, customize all of our programs to the needs of those individuals in the community. And um, we do a Texas Community Futures Forum every about five years to really look into what those um, needs are. We also have um, committees um, that help us reach those needs. And so we do programs and health, wellness, food safety, um, child care providers. We have 4-H programs. Um, we hold health fairs and um, food preservation. We work with older adults, younger adults. I'm really trying to reach all of those needs. And like Emily just said, yes, we are representative in all of those counties. But um, just yesterday, I received a call from um, a Burnett County, um, who is without their agent, and they were needing a food handlers class. And so I will travel over there to help 
you know, fill that void until they can fill that spot. So it really is um, a great network of people that we can help fill some of those voids where there might be agents um, that are not present. And then a lot of just collaborative work um, in surrounding counties. So helping to meet all areas um, of the people. Well, I think that's a great point. Now, this is my favorite question that I've written for you ladies. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but because y'all are both older and wiser agents <laughs> as I am than I as an agent, um, a lot of people, and Jana, you kind of touched on this, may have been familiar with the term home demonstration agents a long time ago. Um, so can you talk maybe about some of the programs that many people might have been familiar with in the past and kind of what, you know, if you were familiar in the past, and we were called home demonstration agents, that they we're still doing some of the same things to so just kind of remind them of what those things were that we did in the past um, as those home demonstration agents that y'all might have been. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I have to tell you, I'm chasing okay. some of this. Um, back, oh, you've got a, I'm disabled. Uh, sharing. Let me, I'll help you. I should have told you I wanted to share my screen earlier. Um, so problem. you read the rules that there were no rules on cup chat. So no, I didn't read the rules, but anyway, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't because there were no rules, right? There um, you go. So thinking about the history, um, I I have a I had a I don't still have, I had a great great aunt. Um, who was one of the first, I think she was the eleventh home demonstration agent hired by Texas Agricultural Extension Service is what it was back in the 20s. And um, she started in 1922 as the home demonstration agent in Clayburgh County, which I think it's kind of funny because that's one of my counties now. <laughs> she was there a short period of time. And from there, she went to Brady to McCullough County. And then, and she was there real short, and then she went to El Paso, and she was in El Paso for 30-something years. Um, anyway, one time I was doing some research for, um, for a presentation, and I found a bunch of old um, news articles from Aunt Irma in the El Paso newspaper, and so I can share my screen now, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me share my screen. Um, okay, share. Okay, so um, can y'all see that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so this is in 1933. So you've got to stop and think. The home canning um, that she was teaching that year, they totaled $81,000 in 1933 during the Depression of the amount of, can of stuff that was put up. It says that they put up 191,528 containers filled by Valley residents through her programs. I, th that just blew me away. I mean, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Um, so you go through here, more than 500 containers of food in 1932. I'm sorry, this was, uh, this was, I think, in January of 33, um, was reported by Ms. Irma Seeley, County Home Demonstration Agent released today. Um, home Demonstration Club women and non-club members received receiving aid from Miss Seeley's office canned 191,528 containers wow. valued at 81,000 an average of more than 289 cans of food for each of the 711 families that participated in her programs then it goes into their poultry production with their egg production yeah they um, sold some dozens of eggs i mean yes yes these people and who think homesteading is a new thing Exactly. You're right. And so then we've got 779 acres of gardens that the home um, home gardens in the county that she worked with. Um, so anyway, that I thought was really cool. I, I've got a whole stack. I was going through articles last night trying to find certain ones. And so. Um, OK, just a second. Let me move. Oh, my... and look, the total cost of all clothing made in clothing demonstration or yes. under supervision was five hundred and eighty six dollars. Wow. Yeah who made for women with who made their value, own clothing yes with a total value of 1100 or savings of 520 dollars wow. so um okay i need this to go down oh crud let me just a second i need to get to the top and i've got this 
zoom bar up there. How do I get to the top to change articles? You click at the top, each article's up there. I can't get to it because the zoom bar's up there is what I'm, my problem. Oh. How do, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm going to stop sharing and, okay. I'm going to stop sharing and change articles real quick. My apologies. Um, then the, because this was really cool. Okay, so um, in the ag, on the ag side of things, we have, um, that we still have result demonstrations that, mm -hmm. um, that, that our ag coworkers do. Well, that she had a demonstration of pantries. And so this I thought was so interesting. I was like, what? I mean, this is something we don't still do today. And it says every farm home is a factory every day of the year. And that's the motto of the Valley women belonging to the home demonstration clubs who work under the direction of Irma Seeley. Um, it goes through um, their, they had their district director anyway, um, and it says Mrs. Burton was the was the demonstrator. Um, she bears the title of Farm Food Supply Demonstrator for her district. Um, her field includes pantry, gardens, and poultry. Last year, she was a pantry demonstrator. As a result of the model pantry, her grocery bill did not make her the model customer for the grocery man. In November, it ran a little high, she said, briskly looking over her budget book. There were extras for my fruit cakes and candy making, and it came to $19.16 for her November pantry budget. But anyway, it goes through that she does demonstrations on this lady was her like result demonstration cooperator and it was a pantry. So that just, I just thought was really interesting. And it goes through her pantries, eight feet square with 15 inch shelves. The total of containers bearing the neat green and yellow 4-H labels is eight or is 620. She put up 620 cans of food. I'm just going, ah. And the shelves are labeled meat, soups, starchy, fruits, <laughs> vegetables, beverages, salads, and desserts. And um, anyway, I, I thought that was pretty interesting um, whenever you think about what why it was called home demonstration um, is that they were they were helping homemakers, especially during the depression years, um, survive and, and and flourish, not just survive, but but to but to have their families flourish at those times. And so anyway, um, those are just some little nuggets I found that I thought were pretty cool. Um, that I wanted to share. No, I that think. is so cool. I mean, think about all the videos you see on Facebook and Amazon these days talking about, you know, reorganizing my pantry and using the containers. I mean, our life was doing it before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> this was 1933 was this article. That was definitely before the Facebook and TikTok videos were cool. I'm just going to say. Just, just a little bit earlier, so... Well, and I think everyone is envious of like spending only 19, like just shy of $20 at the grocery store. I mean, you can't get out of the grocery store without spending a couple hundred yeah, dollars definitely. now, let alone $20 for an entire month. That is, that is crazy. So, In oh, go ahead. Shay, and I would like to point out that now that I know that pantry demonstrations are a thing, the kitchen <laughs> organization is now all you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Sorry, Shay. I, I can apologize. keep. That's okay. I, I really don't think it's. Um. I I can keep it organized, and you know, sometimes it's dealing with coworkers and where they put things as well might be, you know, an issue. Hey, <laughs> your kitchen's very well labeled. I mean, Thank I've you. been in there. It is very well labeled. It is organized. I'm I'm gonna be with Shay, Emily. It's the coworkers have to put stuff up where their labels are where it's supposed to be. That could be true. We also have a lot of coffee cups and that's what gets, that's styrofoam coffee cups are what are our biggest issue. So anyway, is, it's just, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting off track. We do this all the time. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to bring it back, bring it back. So <clears throat> obviously, so, so Jana, you kind of just touched on the fact that, you know, FCH, you know, all this, this program, you know, amongst the different names that it was called, it was developed to help educate homemakers. Um, but obviously times have changed, things have changed. So how has the focus shifted 
you know, towards what we do today and what problems I don't we, can. <laughs> right? I don't can either. I like the idea of it, but I have yet to actually try it. So <laughs> how have things sort of shifted and changed over time? Well, we're very, um, very um, health focused. And, and, you know, a homemaker is a is an old term that's kind of become obsolete, but it's still applicable. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're single, if you're married, if you have children, you still have a home and um, and and you want to be healthy. You want to have a healthy home. And um, so so now our, our programs really do focus on health and reducing chronic disease, um, increasing physical activity, increasing fruit and vegetable intake, um, the, 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 the things that build a strong foundation to reduce chronic disease and to live a healthy life. That's true. Well, and in every county kind of Shay talked about earlier is every county is a little different and what the programs they offer, but there are a lot of statewide programs and resources available to everyone through the FCH uh, community or the FCH specialists and agents. Um, can you maybe highlight a few of those? I know one thing a couple of years ago we did was, and I don't know if this is on your list to highlight, but we're going to hope it is, is one thing that we did on Rio Diablo birding camp with our kids was, and y'all can go back and look um, through our social media post is we did walk across Texas and we logged how many miles all of our kids walked. Um, because when you hike up the Tisos mountains for the Cleveland warbler and get like eight miles in the day times eight, we're, we're already close to getting across Texas guys. Um, and so our kids participated in that walk across Texas program. But anyways, can you kind of share some of those statewide consistent programs that maybe no matter what county they're in, they have um, or resources that are available? So I'll mention the ones that we do here in Gillespie County that are statewide. The Walk Across Texas program, um, and that's a program that can be offered to youth. It can be offered to adults. Um, some, some counties even branch out and do kind of a walk and talk where they do nutrition education while they're walking with you as a group. Um, to kind oh, of I thought that was just to gossip and talk. <laughs> I thought that was a great program, and I just didn't understand why. I did not know that it was specific to we had to talk about certain things because I always thought that that would be fun and I, I would always join and I thought maybe Shay will do one of those these days but I did not think we had to talk about specific things well you know counties do it different ways Emily um usually the goal of it is maybe to introduce a fruit or vegetable and then you can share recipes and different cooking tips with it while you talk about it so um, there may be a little bit of gossip about you know sharing the recipes and some of those things but ultimately there's going to be an educational component to that um oops <laughs> so i'm not an fch agent guys because i'd like to talk and gossip well we i guess we walk and talk while we bird you Everybody. do, you do. You do. exactly. We talk about the birds and we and walk. you're talking about it. So yes, educational oh, right yeah. there. Um, some of the other programs that are offered statewide that we do, um, we have a food safety program. We do a food handlers and food protection management, which every um, restaurant in the state of Texas has to have, um, you have, if, if you're working there, you have to have a food handlers, um, which is a certification for every two years on food safety. And then um, recently they adopted that you have to have a food manager on site. And so there's a lot of extension programs um, or counties that offer those programs that they can teach. We offer the food handlers online, but then the food managers is either a one day or two day class for them to come in and um, have that. There's also a lot of us have childcare conferences to help meet the needs of the childcare industry where we hold educational forums for them to come in and get their clock hours, which they're um, required to receive um, clock hours um, if they're a provider or director, um, so many each year. Our conference is typically held in September and we offer five clock hours for that one, but there are some across the state, as well as AgriLife is well known for um, having a wonderful online um, program that um, they can get online training hours that way. Um, we also do monthly um, trainings that they can get um, trainings live that way as well. We just had one last night. Um, 
We do. Um, it, it's funny that Jana had mentioned on the canning because um, one of my probably main questions that we get here in the office is about food preservation and you know, people have questions about canning. So I know Emily and Liz, y'all don't maybe can, but there are a lot of people out there that still um, do canning and, you know, call with questions about why didn't this seal or why does this look cloudy or what happened with this? And um, we're able to have those resources. Also in Gillespie County, if you have a water bath canner, I or I'm sorry, a pressure canner, um, I can test that lid. And so some counties are able to test that to make sure that that is still um, reading correctly. Those lids are supposed to be tested annually um, to make sure that you're cooking everything correctly to the right pressure. Um, so that's also an off, um, something we offer. Um, and then Jana mentioned, um, you well, the home demonstration clubs with that term is now our EEA or Extension Education Association, which okay. is taking all of those, you know, homemakers <clears throat> that used to gather once a month as a club to get to, to learn to, because that was their social time. Well, we still offer that in Gillespie County. We meet once a month. Um, with it's a group of ladies it's open to men and women we just don't have any men yet um, <laughs> but uh, and they we still offer educational programs to them so we've continued that tradition here in Gillespie County of really offering that education monthly um, and so we're always looking for new members if anybody wants to to join but um, Jana can probably highlight some other programs that are statewide as well um, so like I'm here well first off is we're about to have the 100 year anniversary of TIA or the Extension Education Association. So um, that's coming up. So, um, but some other programs that, that are statewide um, is I'm currently in College Station this week for um, the state FNEP training or conference, which FNEP stands for Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. And FNEP is only in our urban counties, um, but FNEP and our Better Living for Texans program, both are federal grants that we receive um, that are targeted specifically to limited resource audiences. And it's, so it's um, nutrition and physical activity um, classes targeted to adults and youth um, that works with um, that is specifically for limited resource audiences. So um, this week I'm here for the state FNEP conference and training and um, and the FNEP, we have FNEP agents in the urban counties, but then the agents hire and supervise and train um, nutrition education assistants who teach the classes, actually teach the classes um, throughout the urban counties. Um, in addition to that, probably the other area that I spend a lot of time in is um, through the Texas legislature. We have um, Healthy South Texas, which is an initiative in 27 of our counties, and this is funded through the legislature. It is a partnership through the AM system, it's a partnership with our counterparts at the Health Science Center, AM Health Science Center, and it is specifically targeted to reducing chronic disease, um, primarily diabetes, in our in 27 of our southern counties. It goes along the coast um, all the way down to Brownsville and then up to Laredo up the valley, kind of across there. So 13 of my 41 counties are part of the Healthy South Texas Initiative. And um, they do a lot of the same programs that Shay was mentioning, like Walk Across Texas um, and, and some of those type programs. They, they do a lot with cooking well with diabetes, teaching people to modify recipes, and um, if they have diabetes, how to cook. Um, better for those types of diets. In the state of Texas, the diabetes prevalence is, oh, I think 11%. Please don't anybody quote me on that. I'm really grabbing that one out of the air. But I know that in some of my 13 counties, the diabetes prevalence is up to 30%. So it's a much higher um, percentage, which that has so many implications past just an individual having diabetes. And so that is um, that that is the focus of that that pro that initiative. So. Well, guys, I shared some of the links in the chat 
uh, for y'all to explore some of the things that they talked about. We've got Walk Across Texas, which I think is a great for program, and especially um, getting together your group of birding buddies or getting together, you know, your great, if y'all were on the Great Birding Classic and had a team, um, would love to see those teams continue on. Um, and while we bird, one thing we don't think about is we are very physically active outside, but let's put that and kind of hold ourselves accountable. Um, and so that walk across Texas one is one of the best, um, I, I think one of the really neat programs that Extension has in a kind of another sector outside of birding um, that that our birders are already doing. And so something fun to do as a great birding classic team um, is to go ahead and have a walk across Texas team um, and kind of see if you and your birder friends can walk across Texas. Um, and another thing that they may not have mentioned that the 4-H agent and myself knows is they also have these awesome recipes um, through the Dinner Tonight program. And so if y'all are looking for new recipes or healthier options, um, AgriLife uh, has Dinner Tonight recipes in a cookbook. Um, and so I put that link there in the bottom um, as we all try to be a little bit healthier so we can get out and walk we can eat healthy. Um, and then I also put that food safety extension resource link uh, in the comments for those of you who have any questions about that. That site has a whole lot of different things that the online training in case you needed food managers, um, not food managers, food, food handlers. handlers. <laughs> the online one, um, but also it had some food cottage videos. So like if you're cooking things at home, if you're canning, I don't know all the rules, please refer to your local FCH agent, but that's a great kind of way, a kind of resource to start with. So um, my next question, uh, I think it's going to be funny. Liz, you want to ask the next question? Cause I think it's oh, going to be a good one. Okay. <clears throat> I hope you'll have some good answers guys. So, so obviously, so Emily and I are completely different branches of AgriLife. We get completely different questions than y'all. So we're curious, mm -hmm. what are some like frequently asked questions that y'all get from the general public? Because I know it's like, I'm sure y'all have probably some interesting slash funny stories because we, we in our areas get some pretty interesting questions. So are there any interesting questions that y'all get? Well, and it's a great way for people to know what yes. people do normally ask you. Yes. So that if they were having the same questions, they can go, oh, I have like similar ideas of questions that I could ask my FCH agent. Well, I'm, <clears throat> so FCH wise, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, food preservation is probably one of the top questions that I get over the phone is, you know, what did I, how do I fix this? What do I do this? There's also sometimes just some substitution questions for recipes of, hey, I'm trying to lower my sugar or, hey, I want to make this change or how do I do this? So a lot with recipes. And like she said, dinner tonight is a great way to, to find some of those. But then we have some substitution tricks or some resources to help them with their canning issues. Um, you know, and then AgriLife in general, um, I know our coworkers, <laughs> Beth always gets, you know, those plants and those kind of questions as people are bringing those um, items in to be identified or what's wrong disease wise with that. And, um, you know, and luckily with having a coworker with a horticulture agent, we're able to do the grow it, cook it program where we do programs three times a year and talk about growing the food and then we make recipes with that. So we'll get some follow-up questions on that of here's some other recipes with other items, um, different things from the vegetables. So really it's more on that preservation and canning and recipe side from my <laughs> aspect. And I think sometimes it is like if you have power outages, people call, can I, you know, my refrigerator was out for three days. Is my food still good? No, it's not still good. Throw it away. <laughs> but, sure. um, but I, I don't think our health, I don't think our questions are as funny or as entertaining as some of the questions that our coworkers get. It could um, be true. But I mean, I people, like yeah, anyway. But I feel like so maybe some of y'all's questions that y'all get are maybe not that ours are not important to answer, but I feel like yours is specifically, it's like if someone's about, <clears throat> especially with food safety, like yeah. you can get very, very sick if you decide to not listen to your FCH agent and eat that food that's been in your yeah. fridge for three days after a power outage. So I typically, um, when I'm doing the food safety class and talking about, you know, power outages and things. The one question I received once was somebody said, hey, our power went out, it was out, you know, for a day or two. Um, I know I need to throw my meat away and stuff. And um, and then like the ice cream, it melted. So I'm just going to make that into a milkshake. And I'm like, 
no, 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 don't, you know, they were, they understood that meat needed to be thrown away, but they were willing to use that. And it was, you know, no, none of that product is good. We don't need to use any of that. So it's always that when in doubt, throw it out. And I always tell people it's so much cheaper to throw it away than to go to the emergency room. That's exactly. And then they kind of go, you're right. Okay. So good point. Well, and I, you know, I've learned a lot from my FCH agent over the past couple of weeks and years is that sometimes how we do things at home, maybe not how we should do things if we are cooking for others. Um, and so it's always a great refresher <laughs> to think about um, and talk to your FCH agent um, about maybe some of those things that your mom did or you do, or like, I'll be very honest. I leave my butter out on the counter. Like, for extreme lengths of time. But when I cook for other people, I don't use the butter that's been left out on the counter. And so it's a great, you know, Shay's been a great resource for me to maybe do the right thing <laughs> when I'm cooking for others or the public. Um, and so there's a lot of things that you, you know, you did because that's what your mom did it, or you did because that's how somebody did it. A and you listen to your FCH agent talk and you're like, oh, maybe that's not the best way to do that. So not that I'm the end all be all of cooking advice. Um, that would be Shay's department, but it's just kind of a neat thing to learn. So um, guys, I'm going to put a link in the chat to find your county agent. Um, your county may have an FCH agent. It may have an Ag and Natural Resource agent. It could have a horticulture agent. It could have an FNEP agent. It could have a BLT agent, a, BLT a, agent health agent. a health agent. It could have multiple different resources that you are not even plugged into yet. Um, one of the best things to do is find your county office and get on their email list. And there may not be anything for two or three months that ensures you. Um, and then there might be something that does. So like the Parker County office, the master gardeners had a succulent growing class and my mom loves her succulents. And so she went to the succulent growing class. Um, and so there just might be something that you're interested in um, that can really, uh, or you might have questions and they can definitely help you there. So uh, we're a resource uh, for all Texans um, in every, in all 254 counties. So we don't just do birding while we love all of you as our birders. Uh, we wanted to share and some of the other opportunities that AgriLife offers um, and, and connect you with those resources, which I think is important to us. Liz, do you have any final thoughts? No, I feel like this is one of those things where, I mean, I don't, <clears throat> you obviously have an FCH agent in your office. I do not. So this was great for me to learn what um, FCH agents do, what they cover, because I've just sort of gotten a taste of it from when I went through all my training and everything. So this was great for me to learn. Um, so Shay, I will probably be hitting you up with, <laughs> with questions because apparently okay. I'm Oh, go ahead. Did you know? Okay, so Liz is pregnant. Everyone knows that. Um, I think now online, everyone I don't, knows that <clears throat> Liz yeah. will be having a maternity leave and leaving us for a little bit of cup chat. But even FCH agents do car seat checks. Yes. Oh. Yes. Very, okay. very important to have that done prior to delivery. That yeah. would be, and then after delivery as well, because you want to make sure that the car seat is safe but then you want to make sure your child is safe in the car seat. So there's really two stages in that, but um, I am not certified anymore. Um, I had that for like 20 years, but there is probably somebody near you that is, which, where do you, where are you at? I'm Uvalde. in Uvalde. I think Molly is, I think Molly is certified, but don't you get a discount on your insurance or something if you do yeah. all of that? Well, Liz, there's a website to find your nearest technician that we can locate for you. So. Good to know. <laughs> so, but anyways, FCH agents are an invaluable resource. Janet and Shay, thank you all so much for coming on. We are so excited to kind of keep exploring AgriLife with everybody since we did Taco about Extension. Um, in, and we actually serve tacos, Jana. We did. prepared correctly, did. Shay. Um, did. At Burning the Border. So it's been fun today. So thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Um, and everybody, y'all have a happy Wednesday. Thank you.